It's funny, I get these challenges with this topic of crisis coming soon. On the one hand, pastor, I'm still confused. <laughs> On the other hand, pastor, it's starting to make sense. Pastor, can you repeat some more of that for us? And I'm not sure if Sunday morning is working for us, but I'm going to keep trying anyways because th this Sunday morning is like a Bible study that we're going through with the book of Daniel and the other prophets leading us to where we're going to get to. We are going to get to Revelations eventually. Revelation, the revealed vision of God's prophetic word for the end times. And we've been talking about this for the last few weeks, and we're going to repeat it again and again. I'm going to try and break it down for you and speak a little slower because some folks says, Pastor, oh my God, there's seven weeks and Daniel an abomination. Oh my God, Pastor, help me. 90, 70 weeks and Jeremiah is praying. Oh God, Pastor, help me. Let me help you. Can I help you? Sure. We're going to walk through the slide very carefully. I think actually I have a pointer. So I might be able to point on the screen for you this time around. Where's my pointer? Is it back here? Lie. God bless you, officers. Thank you for joining us. Let's give them a hand as they go. Can you find me the uh, clicker? Amen. All right, we can't find the clicker. That's okay. Yes, thank you very much. I think that works, right? Yeah. Excellent. See the red? I think that the battery needs changing, it seems like. So you're listening online. We're going to follow through in the next little while on our message. And just to remind you of what we've been doing the last few weeks, and it's wonderful because Jesus made it very clear. There are things to come that warns us of when the end shall be, right? And how many of you have been hearing about forever? The end is coming. The end is coming. Well, can I say to you, uh, the end is coming? <laughs> it, 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 it might not be like now. It, it might not be next week. It might not be next year. But the end is coming. And the more you see the world advance from a, from, from a human standpoint and distract from who God's plans were, is the more you recognize we are closer to the end. Did I, can I say it again? The more you are seeing the world, right, advancing in a human's perspective. We try to now get to Mars and put life form on, on, on Mars, right? We got men paying 100 million bucks to fly up in space for 10 minutes and back. And all they're doing is daddling in, by God's toes. Right? God is the creator of the universe. Man can't even manage this little thing called earth, where we can live in harmony, where we don't get displaced between the opulent rich and the poor, where we don't suffer through life from violence and hate and political correctedness. We're going through all this human endeavor, right? And it's swaying us further and further away from Jehovah. Yahweh, the one who gave us life. I don't care how smart they might be. Every single one of them came through a womb. Can I say it again? I don't care how bright this world gets, how smart they might be. Every single one of them came through a womb. That means they had no choice coming in this world. The only choice they have is how they get out. Ooh, wow. Is that good, Conroy? The only choice they have with all their brilliance, and Pastor Sam, you have how many PhDs? At least two or three. You've gone to like three schools. You're a professor teaching all this stuff, right? And yet, no matter how bright you get, all that matters is the choice you make in how you're getting out of this world. And you're not getting out of this world based on your PhD. You're not getting out of this world based on how much money you made, even though I would like some. <laughs> I ain't care if something is happening with my... But either way, every one of us was born the same way, and every one of us will die. And when we die, what we do in this life is what will determine our final destination but our physical bodies will melt away. Our minds will dissolve, but our spirit, and guess what our spirit is? It's the breath of God that he breathed into every single one of you. That will never die. That's the power of Almighty God. When he breathes breath into us, it will never die. It will end up either in eternity with him or 
in damnation with Satan. That's the truth of God's word. Now, let me get back to this whole idea because the things to come, as you were seeing, what is the things? Deception, wars, earthquakes, famines, all of the above that we read in Matthew chapter 24. But Daniel starts it off by telling us what these things shall be. Do you have time to make a switch? All right, let's try that and see if, that makes, if it makes sense. I'm just going to switch it quickly and put it in my pocket. All right. Wow, I just looked up and saw it's only, uh, it's only uh, 1210. Huh? Oh, it's 110. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's give it some time. Things to come, really, I should have called it abomination. But the next two weeks, because next week we have in our mission Sunday, in two weeks, our theme is going to be abomination. And the world, don't tell me the world is not living abomination. In fact, the day Adam and Eve sinned, it was the beginning of abomination. When you disobey God, it's an abomination to God. And Daniel spells it out very clearly, and so does Matthew, where Jesus echoes it. And I've told it last week, I'm going to bring it to you this week, but I'm going to end before we get to Revelation. Because that's the whole two Sundays by itself. So the things to come is a reality. I'm not even going to go to my notes. I'm going to go to the slides, okay? Go to the next slide. Daniel is there, and he gives us a prophetic word. You should read the whole book of Daniel if you are a follower of Christ. And if you don't understand, call your pastor or call somebody who might know. You should read Daniel from the beginning and understand what Daniel is saying. And specifically, you should know what Daniel chapters 9 declares. It is the foundation to our end time story of the prophetic word. I can't say I am an expert, but I've read it enough times to give some insight to it. An understanding to it. And Daniel chapter 7, if you, if you were to read from the, the verses 20, 20, 20, I believe it is, you will see that he was given a vision when he was praying. And he was praying about the people of Israel who was taken into captivity. And the, the angel Gabriel came to give him an understanding of what the word meant. All right? Um, I can't even find Daniel. Somebody say, help the pastor. <laughs> Lord Jesus, come on, Daniel, show me where you is. This is my King James Bible, and he's right there. He's just giving me a hard time finding him. I want to get Daniel chapters 9, okay? Somebody say, help the pastor. Where is Daniel? Come on. I know he's after Ezekiel, but I'm flipping, and I can't even find him. There he is. Jeez, Daniel, he, I'm telling you. Daniel chapters 9. Now, I want to run through these slides today, so take some time for this. It's very important, okay? even though I know it's time right now, okay? And Daniel chapter 20 is called the prophecy if you have a good study Bible. We, we, we're going to skip all that because we've been there before, okay? But verse 26 says this, And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off. Right? Now, I want to explain to you what that means. Now, in Daniel chapters 9, go to the next slide, okay? Daniel chapters 9. After the 62 sevens, now in some, in some translation it says sevens, some translation it says week. Weeks, all right? If you take any of them, you would see what it means. It really means seven years. Next slide, will, don't, don't go yet there yet. Next slide will give you an explanation, okay? But when you see week or you see seven in Daniel, based on your reading, it's always referring to seven years. So far, so good? No, I think last week I may have confused you and I may have said one year or something. I, I, wasn't, I was re-listening to the message. After the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be cut off. Now, what 62 sevens? Well, it's part of what? It's part of 70 sevens or 70 weeks of sevens, right? Jeremiah 25, verse 11, Daniel says it earlier on as well, that God says, I'm giving you 70 weeks to end transgression in verses 26. Know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem to the Messiah, the prince shall be seven, se seven weeks. Oh, let's go back. Hang on. Verses 25. Seventy weeks. Verse 25. Seventy weeks are determined for thy people. And upon the holy city to finish 
sin or transgressions, to make an end to sins, to make reconciliation for equity, uh, equi iniquity, in other words, reconcile us back to God through Christ our Savior, right? And he says to bring an everlasting to, to, bring, to bring in everlasting righteousness. When Christ shows up and the end comes at the very end, there'll be no more sin. It'll be everlasting righteousness with Christ. Right? In verse 25, he's saying this, right? And to seal up the vision, we're going to get back to that very soon, seal up the vision, right? And prophesy and to anoint the most holy, most holy one. Then he says in verse 25, there's going to be a week between the rebuilding, okay, of, of Jerusalem Right? But then we get to verse 26. So now you see my seven weeks? You see my seven weeks? Right? Seven sevens. After the 62 sevens. So after this seven, there's going to be 62 sevens. Here is when Jerusalem is going to be rebuilt. All right? From the captivity of Babylon, Medes and the Persians. Right? The Greeks, the Romans. If you read earlier in Daniel, you'll see all the, the image. Right? The, you will see the image of, the, of, of a man. Well, you will see all of this here. And when that is rebuilt, this 62 sevens is Daniel 26. I'm spelling it out for you right now. After the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be cut off. Karath. Karath is the Greek Hebrew word for cut off. And will have nothing. In other words, when he's cut off, that's it. It's the end. Right? At least from a human standpoint. But it's not quite the end, you will see. Right? The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end will come like a flood. 62 sevens, boom, Jesus gets cut off. So far, so good? Then 70 AD, what happens? Jerusalem is destroyed. Does it say that here? It says right here. It says, he will be cut off, karath. Jesus comes, 62 sevens, right? Go to the next slide quickly. Go to the next slide. The next slide, one week or one seven equals seven years times 70, which is prophesied in Daniel 7, 9.25 and Jeremiah 25, verse 11. It's equal to 490. Who does math? Seven times 70 is 490, right? Here's the breakdown. Seven weeks, right, of seven is what? 49 years. Seven times seven is 49. 62 weeks of seven is what? 434. One week of seven is? Seven years. When you add it up, what do you get? You get what? This is complete. What's left? Go to the next slide. Okay. So now, one la he, Antichrist. No, this is verse 27. Okay? He, Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. One seven is three and a half years plus three and a half years. Are you following me? I'm trying to make it simple for you, okay? Now, this is the Bible from Daniel chapters 9, verse 27. Key verse. Why is it a key verse? Because Daniel 27, something happens in Matthew 24, and then something happens in Revelation. Big question mark, because we're going to be in a holding pattern for the next two weeks on Revelations. Now, let's read on. He, he, when you see verse 27, he is talking about the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many for one seven in the middle of the seven, middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. Now, let's go back to the beginning. Jesus Christ shows up 483 years after the prediction of, the, of Daniel. He gets crucified. He hangs on the cross. He's gone. How long ago was that? Almost 2,000 years ago. We're now in what? 2022. You can put 2022 20, here, but it might be 23. It might be 24. It might be 25. Who knows what it might be because we don't know. But we are in a... Since Jesus was crucified to where we are today, we are in a pending mode for the final week or the final seven years to show up. Does it make sense? Go back to the previous slide. Go back to the previous slide. Okay. Seven sevens, right, is the initial pro prophetic word to the people of Israel according to Daniel chapter 26, right? That God is going to restore Jerusalem from captivity, right, according to the image in Daniel chapter 3 and 4, you'll see there, okay? And God restores Jerusalem by rebuilding the city and rebuilding. You, know, you remember Nehemiah and Ezra? Remember those guys? What did they do? 
they rebuild the walls and Jerusalem, the city, under King Darius, right? And Asadusis, right? God sent them to rebuild. You've got to read the story. I can't give you all the details. It's Sunday morning. I've got to wrap it up soon, okay? But this seven sevens is where they were sent back to restore Jerusalem. When they were restored, some 49 years later, 7 times 7 is 49 years later, okay? When they were restored, God says there's going to be 62 sevens, right? When what? When, the, when Jesus Christ is cut off. So if you count the time frame, Jesus Christ is, shows up in AD, around AD 0 to 3, right? And in AD 33, he gets crucified. In that crucifixion, right, we, we end up going into a period of waiting, because he says he'll be cut off and the city and the sanctuary will be destroyed. So that's what this means. This means when Jesus got crucified, shortly after he was crucified, Jerusalem and the temple was burnt, destroyed by Nero, right? And Israel was not a nation until when? Who's my scholar? Until 1948. Unbelievable. They were destroyed in 70 AD. And all through the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, to the 2000th, to where we are, it wasn't until 1948 that God allowed them to become a nation again and return back to Israel. And now there's 9 million people roughly in Israel who claims to be the original descendants of Abraham living in Israel today. We were there in 2019. Now, Make sense so far? Good? So this is still to come. Now let's go back to the next slide. So that's, no, no, go back to the next. So this seven weeks initially is 49 years, seven years, right? And this 62 weeks, right, is for 34 years when Christ was cut off. If you add 434 and you add 49, what do you get? You get 483. So roughly 483 years is when Jesus shows up after the prophetic word. That's a lot of time, right? Now, we are now in this looming portion right here, and somebody asked me, Pastor, when is that to come? Somebody asked me, please, when is that to come? That's why I'm saying to ask me. Ask me, when is that to come? I don't know. <laughs> But it's coming. It's coming. And as you know very well, what's it called? It's called the tribulation. Go to the next slide. So let's finish off this one. Go to the next slide. So now, here's this is important now, okay? He, the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. Not seven sevens initially, not 62 initially, but there's one seven waiting to add up to what? To add up to 490 years or 70 weeks. 69 weeks is complete, which is 483 years. There is one week or one seven or seven years still pending. It's called the tribulation. Now let's continue on, but I want to show you something as we wrap it up. In the middle of the seven, what seven? This last week of the seventh prophetic word is called the tribulation. The Bible doesn't give you tribulation per se, but it does give you something, and I won't tell you what it is yet. But it does qualify for you later on. I'll, I'll show it to you next two weeks, all right? Now, it says here, on, on a wing of the temple, he, who's he? Him, Antichrist. He will set up and, re repeat after me, abomination that causes desolation. That is a single key phrase from a prophetic standpoint that you need to understand, that you may have never heard before. And this is your pastor giving you inside revelation, not interpretation, but contextualization. I'll tell you why. Let me tell you why. That is repeated three times in the Bible. Now, if you go back to my message last week, you'll get the third answer. But I'm not giving you the third answer today. I'm giving you the second answer. Okay? So let's finish off, and we're going to come to Matthew 24, verse 15. Daniel 9, 27 says, When you see the abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. That means this last week is being fulfilled. We don't know when it's going to happen because we're in a pending mode. He will confirm a covenant 
But in the middle of the covenant, he will end sacrifice and offering and set up an abomination that causes desolation. When you see this happen more than anything else, then you can start to interpret the prophetic word. So ask me again. When is the tribulation? When is the beginning of the tribulation? Ask me quickly. I don't know. But ask me, when is the middle of the tribulation? When the Antichrist is revealed. Wow. When the Antichrist, and remember, Jesus says in Matthew 24, don't be deceived. Don't say, here's the Christ, here's the Christ, because false Antichrist will come in all shapes and form. He could have been Hitler. Some think he might have been Trump. Some believe he could be Martin Luther. You name it. Okay? But we will know when the Antichrist shows up. When the Antichrist shows up, then I can start preaching prophetic word with interpretation. Right? Now I can't. So every pastor in the past and every prophet in the past who tried to interpret, you can see why they were misleading. Because it's the, to me, in the scriptures, is the only one that, that literally unveils the scriptures of the timing. And that is only when this happens. Has it happened yet? No. Could it happen during our time? Maybe. But maybe we, it wouldn't. Go to the next slide. Because the next slide tells you, look where we are. We are in the pending mode. We are waiting for that trumpet shout of God. The archangel, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we just read in 2 Peter chapter 3. We're waiting for the trumpet call of God to do what? To rapio, to capture or to rapture us up. But could it happen? Go to the next slide. Could it happen in the beginning? Next slide. Could it happen in the beginning? Could it happen in the middle? Or could it happen at the end? I will share with you in the next couple of weeks. Whether you're pre-trib, most of you probably believe you are because you listened to a lot of pundits in the past who told you that we're going to get raptured before the tribulation. I was one of them. Ask me, pastor, are you a pre-trib? Ask me. I don't know. But could I be a mid-trib? Ask me. Pastor, couldn't you be a mid-trib? Probably. Probably, because it's much more affirm, affirming of when the Antichrist is revealed than our guessing right here. Make sense? Here you were guessing. We thought he was coming in 2000, Y2K. We thought he was coming in a World War I, right? Joseph Smith prophesied he was coming in 19 whatever year it was, and so on and so on, all kind of prophetic. I don't know, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know, but... We know here when the Antichrist is revealed. Now, let me go to Matthew 24. And we're going to end it right there. Jump to Matthew 24. Remember 9.27 of Daniel. Please remember 9.27 of Daniel. Do you like this Bible study? Is it making a little bit more sense for you? Good. For you two people, you get a prize. I'm going to do a special class for just the two of you because nobody else seems to be getting anything. Are you all receiving this? Matthew 24, I have to read for you. I won't read the whole thing, but this is Jesus responding to his disciples, and I wish I was there. I would have said, Jesus, give me more. What do you mean that these signs and be, be mindful of wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and famines? Give me some more. Jesus, what do you mean? Like, like, like scud missiles and bombs blowing up cities? Do you mean like virus plaguing our whole world? What do you mean, Jesus? Do you, is it making sense now? Because in 2022... Compared to the first century, it makes more sense. Wars and rumors of wars. Famines and earthquakes. There has always been famines, always been earthquakes, always been wars, but never like our time. And never so obvious because we got social media and a platform to, to, to function from. I, but I have to read you what Jesus says now. And if you were in my Bible study a few years back, you know where I'm going with this, but we're going to go to Revelations next. 
Look what Jesus does. He didn't just give us the signs. He didn't just say, you shall see the obvious when the time comes 2,000 years later. Look what he says that is significant in this passage. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 says, when you see the abomination of desolation bringing an end. Did you say that? Okay. Let me see what Jesus says. Jesus could have quoted anybody. Let me see what Jesus says. Matthew chapter 24. Verse 14. Okay, let's go to verse 3 just for reference. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately. Yo, yo, Jesus. Jesus. Tell us, please. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Are you asking him? I'm asking him every day. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Get it over and done with and now let's go to verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end will come. It's got to go to Kenya. It's got to go to Chile. It's got to go to Brazil. It's got to go to Trinidad. It's got to go to everywhere of this world. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank God for those who've translated the word of God and provided it across the nations that we can hear the word of God for ourselves and we can know Jesus for ourselves. In the remote villages of India, of Africa, to the most opulent cities of America, it doesn't matter. The gospel has been preached everywhere in the world for the nations to know that Yeshua HaMessiah, Jesus, is the savior of the world. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But to those who received him, they become sons and daughters of God. Oh, hallelujah. I am so glad that Jesus came for me. Well, that's two of us. Remember last week? Jesus came for. Oh, you got it, eh? I can't speak for you. Jesus came for me. He's coming for me. I can't speak for you. He's coming for me. Honey, you coming with me? Oh, she said, are you coming with me? Woo! She's bad. She's bad. I'm telling you. Let's read verse 20, 15 before we end. We got to end. We got to end. This is too exciting. You can see your pastor's excited. Daniel 9, 27. Look what Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 15. When you... Therefore, see, while well, I'm reading in the NIV, let me read the King James. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Go back to the next slide. You think I'm kidding. Go back to the next slide. This is Daniel chapters 9 verse 27. Look what it says. He... The Antichrist will confirm a covenant with many for one seven, a whole seven years, the last seven of the 70th week, right? In the middle of the seven, he will put an end of sacrifice and offering, and at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. That means his doom is coming. Now go to the next slide. Do you get it? This is not Paul speaking. This is not Matthew speaking. Mark, Luke, the disciples. This is not Pastor Benny Hinn. This is not Billy Graham speaking. This is Jesus speaking. Are you paying attention? Have you been paying attention? This is Jesus telling us 2,000 years later that prophetic word in Daniel is significant to understand the end times. And you've hardly, how many of you have heard this before from any other pastor? You're getting the revealed word of God. And I want to say to you again, Jesus, signs of the end of the age. Go back to the previous slide. Daniel gets what? He gets insight. What does Jesus do? Go to the next slide. He gives us foresight. Daniel got the insight of the revelation, right? But when Jesus came, he gave us the foresight. Next two weeks, you're going to get the oversight. Woo! 
Woo! <laughs> in, for, over. All right? Now, when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. We've been trying to understand for 2,000 years, Jesus, what went wrong. Something has gone wrong. We are confused. There's books written, prophetic words given, and many have made millions and become rich over teaching falseness. For then shall be <laughs> great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no, ever shall be. I have to say amen. Let me ask you a question then. What is this abomination? You see, Jesus was telling us about the things to come. Go to the next slide. But it's not only the things to come. I want to suggest to you it's only one thing to come. One thing to show up. And it's called the abomination. And whenever you see the abomination, it's associated with the Antichrist. And he is going to be revealed... And that's what's pending. Not the things, but the thing. And this thing is... <whistles> the end, more to come. Amen? Father, receive this word. Woo! Confusing, yes. But revealing, absolutely. Give clarity of thought and understanding, I pray, to our, our listeners, Lord. In this moment, we need to hear from you, Lord, more than ever before. In a world that's very chaotic and confusing. We're living in a world where we're seeing every sign our parents told us about. Every sign pastors preached about in the past. Lord, I was born in 1959, so I can recall back in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, the very same word of prophecy of warning us that Christ is coming soon. So, Lord, he is coming soon. But help us to be unveiled with the truth of what that means so we can look up and prepare ourselves with anticipation of when that shall be. I pray this word to seep into the very beings of our hearts and minds and expand it and blow it up inside of us, Lord, so we can have understanding. So as you says, let the reader understand. For those online, those listening, Lord, who need a transformative experience, you know who they are. We raise our hands real high on the inside so God can see it. Raise your hands as high inside so God can see your hands and says, God, I want to serve you. I want to know you. I want to understand this revelation so I can be caught up to meet you in the air and be transformed by the power of the cross and the power of salvation that Jesus Christ has brought to this world. The one who Daniel prophesied will be cut off and that cut off was him hanging on a cross and died for my sins so I can be redeemed eternally with him if that's your prayer I pray God's blessing on you and for all of us who needs a new fresh anointing from God the same way God touch us I pray in the mighty name of Jesus amen amen